I am having a marvelous time. I love it. I love doing all these things. The, uh, are, you, are you currently working on a film? In a film? No. No. You must need some time after that picture to sort of regroup. Boy, that had Well, mm, yeah, I went on a vacation afterwards, but I enjoyed working on it so much. I mean, I, it's just like, you know, when you're working day in and day out, and it's just nice to switch the mind off, clear it out, and go off and do something else, you know. But I don't have to go into any state of recovery or uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, some actors go into hospitals or go and spend months with their analysts after. I think that's kind of nonsense. I mean, that's <laughs> an affectation. Can't be doing with all that. <laughs> okay, you're ready. Well, Anthony Hopkins, how very nice to have you in Dallas, Fort Worth. Good to be here. Of course, your current film, Magic, is uh, something I'm sure is quite different from any sort of role you've ever done before, is it not? Oh yes, with more challenges, I guess, more technical challenges. But I've, uh, I have played variations on that theme, you know, um, uh, lonely characters, and uh, characters who have no, are disturbed. And um, they've been a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed playing Magic very much. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, in fact. Was there anything about this role, Tony, that was frightening to you as you were anticipating going into it? Anything that had you a little uptight? Oh, yes. I, I mean, not about the role itself, but about the technical requirements, you know, the um, learning ventriloquism, learning to uh, sleight of hand, you know, with the cards and the various things I had to do. But once I got started with uh, two magicians, and one ventriloquist helped me. Uh, once I got the knack of it, 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 it became easier, and then I enjoyed it. Uh, there were moments, you know, when I was learning the script, and I thought, well, this isn't going to work. I mean, how, how, how can I do it? But I, I, I used to write notes to myself, little letters to myself, and put them on the desk saying, you know, you can do any, you know, anything with faith, you can move mountains, and uh, um, trust, and let go, and all that sort of thing, you know, and I used to just throw myself into it. And then the, when the negatives came to my mind, I would, uh, put positive, um, positive sounds in my head, you know, make, I'd say I can do it, you know, and I, I used to meditate and uh, visualize myself doing it. And I used to visualize myself on like a kind of, um, try and visualize myself doing those sort of fanning cards and springing them and, and gradually surprising the power of mind, what happens, you know, your muscles begin to respond. It's like anything really, if you're playing the piano or driving a car, it comes through relaxation and maybe a bit of self-confidence. You actually then could successfully do the ventriloquism part of it, throwing your voice, as they call it, Tony. Yes, yes. It's not actually throwing the voice, it's producing it from here. And uh, the mis it's the art of misdirection, really. The dummy, or the ventriloquist doll, is in fact uh, the misdirection. So it looks like it's coming from the dummy's mouth, but in fact it's coming from here. You know. By the end of the film, how did you feel towards that dummy, Fats? I was very fond of him. The moments I hated him intensely <laughs> because it was so difficult to work with sometimes, you know. I've been asked this question a few times today, in fact, and I, I, I get a sense now, it's like a memory. I, I, I'm beginning to miss, uh, miss Fats. Actually, he, was, he, was, um, he used to make me laugh a lot. I used to, he used to make me laugh. I used to see him sitting in his little chair, you know, staring at a wall, and I used to... I used to get a kind of kick out of him. And I know some people were frightened of him. And he's only a piece of wood. Because, you know, it's an inanimate piece of object. But they, they become sort of little creatures, you know. And uh, I remember one day I was sitting there and sort of playing around. I was uh, sitting there practicing and I got him to whisper into my ear. And Anne Margaret was the other side of the set. She said, what's he talking, what's he saying to you? <laughs> and she was caught, you know. To me, I suppose it's the child in all of us. We, it's like the doll, you know, the little girl and her doll, or the little kid in his up. I remember when I was a kid, I had a doll, I think. And, and the sad thing about Corky, and the touching thing about Corky, is that he never grows up. Emotionally, he's still got a doll. He's got his teddy bear, whatever you want to call it, or his rag doll. And in his adult body, it makes him highly dangerous because he's never grown up. He's a baby. And his, he cannot face reality. It's a Faustian tragedy for him. He doesn't face reality at all. And he faces reality, confronts reality through this doll called Fats. And that's frightening. And, you know, we all have those hang-ups, I suppose, in our lives, you know. 
whether it is in addictions of some kind, you know, drugs or cigarettes or alcohol or whatever it is, or food, all kind, you know, whatever. Tony, you have star billing in this film, Magic. Do you feel that you have your whole career, as it were, writing at this moment on the film? No. No, I hope it's a successful film. Uh, if it stands or falls, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm hoping it's going to be a big success of a movie. I, I think it deserves a success uh, as a movie because it's beautifully made by Richard Attenborough. Uh, I, I'm very pleased with it. I'm very proud of it. And I hope it's going to uh, do a lot of good. I, my, my ambition is to remain a long time in this business. Uh, I enjoy my work. I enjoy working. And I want to stay, you know, stay around for a long time. I don't set store by those sort of human values very much because I know the tricks of the trade. And uh, I trust in forces greater than myself. I don't uh, put too much store by the vicissitudes of this extraordinary profession. It is an extraordinary profession. And uh, sometimes there's a lot of cruelty in it. But it's a wonderful profession. On, finally, it's a wonderful, wonderful business. I love acting. I love being an actor. I love acting. Tony, do you allow yourself to think about it? Because I know it's been said to you many times, and probably quite a few times today. There's talk about an Academy nomination for you. Well, if I could, if I could predict that, I'd be in the, I'd be in another business. No, I don't. I don't think. Oh, sure, I think of that sometimes. It crosses my mind, and people tell me that it's that sort of a performance. Well, that'd be very nice, but uh, I don't take it all too. I don't take it seriously. I mean, I don't take anything seriously anymore. I mean, I can't take myself that seriously. I mean, I, I do my job, I show up, um, speak the lines, and then go home. And I enjoy it. It's not a, you know, I don't know, it would be very nice. I, uh, your comments are enough, you know. That's an award in itself. People's congratulations are, are an award. And I'm not being, you know, playing the game of false modesty. It's just how I feel. Uh, I've done my bit, and on to the next job. Tony, as I sat through the film, and I must tell you that it's the first time in quite a long while that I really sort of felt my breath getting a little bit short, and I really became caught up in this bizarre story. It demanded so much of you emotionally at the end of a day, particularly in the heavier scenes toward the end of the film. Would you go home just totally spent? No. No, you I'm could turn it on and off yes. like that? How marvelous for well, you. Well, I have a lot of energy. I, I try and keep it in good condition. So I, uh, no, I live a very separate life from acting. I don't take my acting home with me. I, uh, I thank God every day that I, you know, I, I say, well, thanks for getting me through that one. And I mean it. I say thank you because I, you know, I don't know. And I go home, have dinner, go to bed, get up next day and do it all over again. And it's wonderful. I love it. Sometimes, you know, there were days when I got really tired, you know, really tired, you know, working too long, too hard. Because you can work too hard sometimes, and then you spoil it. If you work too hard, it shows. So I, I learned to be gentle with myself. I'm, you know, learning the lesson of being gentle with myself. Are you going to do the movie Gandhi? Are you going to star as Gandhi? Yes. And when do you start that? Uh, we hope to start September next year, 79. And what will you have to do to prepare yourself for Lose that? Lose 25 to 30 pounds weight, uh, change color miraculously. Uh, will you do it chemically? No. No, no, with I makeup. Makeup and um, I, I take plenty of sun and uh, get tanned and uh, scan he was light brown. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to that very much. I haven't even started preparing it yet. 25 pounds? Anthony, you don't have that much to lose. Well. Thank you. Uh, about 20. I'm going to try it anyway. I, if I keep that as my target and I'll get there. Well, then hopefully it, uh, our next visit will be to talk and about... Much lighter Tony Hopkins. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice seeing you again, Tony. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, That's nice. I sit you. here looking at you and trying to see Gandhi. You can do it. You can do it. I know you can. No, oh, I think sometimes we can do anything in art. So do you want me to see the eye line? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I, uh, I really do work on the theory that one, all things are possible, you know. Life, life in itself is 
such a miracle that I think, you know, half the time we don't realize what we're capable of doing. And uh, I'm beginning to prepare for it very gently and mildly now, you know, the last time. I used this tour, this um, trip, uh, uh, as a, for the last 10 days or 14 days as a kind of um, preparation for it in a way, to see how calm I can stay within. Sometimes a trying situation, you know, interviews and sometimes sort of repetitive questions, sometimes against hostility. And try and remain unruffled and that's a good exercise for me, sort of spiritually. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, let me ask one question. Shall I just turn my body more like this? Huh? No, Am I fine the way I am? Okay. Now, do you want me to look into the camera for the question, or look at him? Okay. And you don't need to answer. I'll just give the question. What? Tony, what was your feeling towards this dummy as time went on in making the film? Um, I can't answer because I'm watching you. But it's, it's fun. What is being shown? Well, what I'll do is, is uh, take little snippets out for the news and then it will run, uh, you know, as an interview as well. And then I also review films that I might take. Actually, sometimes it will last. Puff got blue. <laughs> 